One of the most challenging topics in uh, calculus is solving word problems, especially word problems involving related rates. Now, for today, I'm going to teach you some strategies and techniques on how to overcome the difficulty of uh, solving word problems involving related rates. So you just need to look for patterns, and you need to establish the patterns so uh, when you're solving word or related rates problem, you'd be able to uh, find or check what are the givens, what are the things that you need to do, and what strategies or techniques that you need to use to be able to answer related rates problem. Now, by definition, related rates are finding the rates of change of two or more related variables that are changing with respect to time. So, um, in, a, in word problems similar to related rates, you will always see two variables or you will always work with at least two variables when you are solving word problems involving this um, this type. So when you're solving related rates problem, there are three important things that you need to remember. One, you need to know the given equation. So when you're reading a word problem involving related rates, find the given equation. Two, what's the given rate? And three, what do you need to find in this problem? So those are the three things that you need to remember whenever you are solving related rates problem. Now the fourth tip that I'm giving you is that you should know and remember most of the geometric formulas that you have learned before, like finding the area of a circle, finding the area of a square, finding the volume of a sphere, or finding the volume of a cube, and so on. So you need to uh, be familiar and you need to remember all these formula because sometimes those formulas are not going to be explicitly given in a word problem and you will encounter that later on. Now, on my first example, this one would probably be the easiest related rates problem that I'm going to give you in this example. Uh, the reason is that all the uh, equations will be given, and uh, the question is direct to the point, and uh, you'll be able to understand why I want to establish these tips on working on related rates problems. So this is bas basically your uh, pattern. So in our first example, suppose x and y are both differentiable uh, functions of t and are related by the equation y equals x squared plus 3. Find the dy over dt, or the rate of, rate of change of y with respect to time when x is equal to 1, given that dx over dt is equal to 2 when x is equal to 1. So as I've mentioned, there's always two variables when you're working with a related rate problem. And here, it's obvious we have dy over dt and dx over dt. So it's pretty much the same as implicit differentiation. So we're using implicit differentiation in a word problem when you're working in related rates problems. So that's safe to say that implicit differentiation is widely used in a related rates problem. Now, to set up our equation, you need to organize the word problem. First, what is the given equation? And the given equation here is pretty obvious. It's y equals x squared plus 3. What is the given rate? And in this case, the given rate is dx over dt, which is equal to 2. So dx over dt is the given rate in this word problem, and it's equal to 2 when x is equal to 1. And what we need to find is we need to find the derivative of y with respect to t when x is equal to 1. So, then the, uh, so it's also here in the word problem. So these are the things that you need to remember when you're solving related rates problem. So there will always be a given rate and there is always a rate that, or derivative that you need to find. So let's solve this problem. So now that we have set it up, how do we find dy over dt? And here's how we find it. So here's our um, summary, equation, rate, and what you need to find. The first step is to always use your equation and find the derivative of both sides with respect to time. So we have y equals x squared plus 3. Take the derivative of the left side and take the derivative of the right side. So we have d over dt of y, which means derivative of y with respect to t, derivative of x squared with respect to t, and derivative of 3 with respect to t. So when you're solving related rates problem, you're always trying to uh, find the derivative of a function with respect to time. That's why it's always d over dt all throughout my function. So just like implicit differentiation that we have covered before, the derivative of y with respect to t is like solving a power rule, a regular power rule. So a variable is just equal to 1. 
but this time you need to mention dy over dt because you are taking the derivative of y and it's with respect to a different variable. So it's dy over dt. So don't forget to write dy over dt in your uh, related rates problem. Now for uh, the second term, x squared, derivative of x squared is 2x. And since x and t are both different um, variables, you are using implicit differentiation once again. And this time, it's not dy over dt, it's dx over dt, plus the derivative of constant, which is always 0. Now, if you'll notice, um, in this case, you always have to use dy over dt as a notation instead of using, using y prime because sometimes you are going to be working with a different variable and uh, it's just going to be too much primes and x's and y's if you uh, use that notation. So here, I would suggest you use this type of notation. Now, this is our derivative and I'm just going to clean this up. I'm going to get rid of 1, going to get rid of 0 so that my derivative will look a lot simpler. So I have dy over dt is equal to 2x dx over dt. So this is now my derivative function. Now I'm looking for dy over dt or a specific value of dy over dt and to solve that all I need to do is to substitute the given rate and all the given um, numbers or numerical value in my word problems. So since this is my equation it says here I'm looking for dy over dt which is equal to 2x dx over dt. I know what x is, and I also know what dx over dt is because it's given in the problem. So all I need to do is to substitute it. So now that I have my derivative equation, I just need to solve my um, equation by plugging in the values of the given rate. So 2 is for here, x is 1, dx over dt is equal to 2, which is all here in your um, um, summary from the previous problem. So therefore, dy over dt is equal to 4. So that's how we solve related rates problem. And uh, this is just for practice because I just want to emphasize on the steps and uh, how you organize your solution when you're working with related rates problem. Now on our second example, we're going to be using uh, um, an actual word problems that we can apply this step to. So uh, let's have that example. So in this example, ripples in a pond problem. So uh, this is common word problems involving related rates. So in this word problem, Chris dropped a pebble into a calm pond, causing ripples in form of a concentric circles uh, with a radius r. And uh, the ripple is increasing at a constant rate of one foot per second. When the radius is four feet, at what rate is the total area of the disturbed water changing? Now. Before you can do your summary, you need to be able to understand what is being asked on the word problem. You should also know how to comprehend word problem so that you can imagine and visualize what is going on in the word problem and what is being asked. So in this case, Chris tr um, throw a rock in the calm water and it created a ripple. Now the ripple is of course a concentric circles because it's not going to be a square or a star or any other geometric shapes. It's just going to be a uh, concentric circles that is increasing. So uh, what we need to find is, or what we need to do is to organize our word problem, find the three important things that you need to work on when you're doing related rates problem. The given equation, the given rate, and what you need to find. In this equation, the given equation is not really given. So that's what I'm saying. You need to know some of the geometric formula in uh, applying related rates problem. The given equation here, as we know, is the area of a circle because we're working with ripples and ripples are circles. And according to here, we're working with area and this is your clue. So you need to know how to find clues in the word problem. So here, area of a circle is what is the equation that we need to use to uh, solve this related rate problem. So we know that the area of a circle is A equals pi r squared. So this is our given equation, which is not explicitly given in this word problem. So once again, you need to know uh, some formulas uh, in related rate problem. Now the given rate is the change of the radius with respect to time, which is equal to 1. And it's right here, the constant rate of the radius at 1 foot per second. Now what you need to find is the rate of change of the area of the concentric circle because it's uh, going, growing bigger and bigger and bigger um, uh, with respect to time. 
when it started at r equal to 4. So that's what we need to look for, how uh, the rate of change of uh, the area of the concentric circles when uh, Chris dropped the pebble in the water. So the first step, use the given equation, which is the area of the circle. Find the derivative of both sides. Derivative of a with respect to t, derivative of pi r squared with respect to t. Implicit differentiation, dA over dt is equal to, now, take note that pi is a constant. And in, in, in our derivative rule, a constant with a variable, all you need to do is to set it aside and take the derivative of the variable. In this case, it's r squared. So don't get intimidated when you see pi or e in some word problem. It's just a constant that you need to set aside sometimes, or most of the times, and that's what I did. So I set this aside and I took the derivative of r squared, which we know is 2r dr over dt, because we're, this is an implicit differentiation. So uh, after cleaning my equation, I have the derivative of a with respect to time equal to 2 pi r dr over dt. So this is now my, this is my derivative um, function, all I need to do is to uh, look at my summary and uh, start substituting to find dA over dt. So I'm finding dA over dt, r is given, which is 4, and dr over dt is given, which is 1. Substitute your derivative of a, or the rate of change of the area of the ripple with respect to time is 8 pi. So to write your conclusion, when r, when the given r is 4, or the, when the radius is 4, the area of the disturbed water is changing at a rate of 8 pi feet per second. So that's how you use the setup that I taught you in solving related to each problem. Now, this is a different word problem. This is still involved circle, but this time it's circle in 3D an inflating balloon problem. So in this word problem, Maria is inflating a spherical balloon at a rate of 4.5 cubic feet per minute. Find the rate of change of the radius when the radius is equal to 2 feet. So set up again your uh, um, summary. You need your equation, your rate, and what you need to find. So that, those are the three things that you need to look for in your related rates problem. Now in this case, again, the equation is nowhere to be found because we are assuming that you know the volume of a sphere. So a balloon is always a sphere, and sphere is a three-dimensional figure, so you know you're working with um, the volume of the sphere because here it says that the rate is in cubic feet per minute. So the volume of the sphere, which is not given, but we know that the volume of the sphere is V equals 4 over 3 pi r squared. So it's important that you know this formula. Now the rate is given which is the rate of the volume of the balloon being inflated at 4.5 cubic feet per minute. And what you need to find is the rate of change of the radius with respect to time when r is equal to 2. So that is what you need to solve for this uh, word problem. So just like what we did on the first example, write the equation and take the derivative of both sides using implicit differentiation. So you have derivative of v with respect to time and derivative of 4, 3 pi r squared or r cubed with respect to time. So dv over dt is my derivative for my left side. And for the right side, all I need to do is to set my constant aside, which is 4, 3 over 4, 3 pi, and take the derivative of r cubed. And the derivative of r cubed is 3r squared dr over dt. So I'm just copying the rest of the problems. And I cleaned out my equation by getting rid of my 3 right here because I can cancel it out. So I always want to simplify my function so that it's easy to substitute um, the given um, equation on my related rates problem. So now I have dv over dt equal to 4 pi r squared dr over dt. So once again, it's just substitution method. Um, use all the given um, information in the word problems. You have dv over dt, you have r, and you need to find dr over dt. So uh, you have 4.5 equals 4 pi 2 squared dr over dt is still here because we need to solve for it. So uh, simplifying this constant right here, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 4 is 16, 16 pi, 
to be uh, um, divided in both sides so that you will have dr over dt by itself. So you have dr over dt is equal to 4.5 all over 16 pi, which is when we use our calculator to uh, change it into a real number, we have dr over dt approximately equal to 0 0.090. Now, take note of how you round off your answer. In AP calculus, you are required to always round your answer to the nearest um, thousands. So it's always should, it's, it should always be three decimal, pla uh, decimal de places after the decimal point. So it's important that you know how to round off your answer in AP calculus. Now, my conclusion is that Maria's balloons being inflated with a radius of two feet is expanding at a rate of 0 0.090 feet per minute.